I did a poem by George R. Sims, a British author, uh, writing in the last quarter of the, uh, of the 19th century. Um, I'm going to do a poem from him called In the Workhouse, Christmas Day. I thought a Christmas story would be appropriate. Uh, they don't know me very well, do they? <laughs> Uh, we're talking. We're going to do a story about a workhouse, which used to be a poorhouse, and then in 1834, here he goes with the history again. In 1834, they had a they had a change in the law, and they they realized that if they were putting all the paupers in prison, they weren't paying their debt. So that wasn't what that wasn't they, that wasn't working. So uh, uh, the Kennedy clan doth arrive. Welcome to the party. Anyway, in th in them days, you had. Uh, the Church of England parishes took care of the poor, and, and you were, if you were a member of the parish, depending on your income, you were assessed a rate, and they elected guardians to be in charge of the poorhouse. And uh, it was not a very friendly place to go. Uh, children only two and younger could stay with their mothers, and everyone else was segregated by sex. So if you went in with your spouse, you would not see him or her. Um, and it's a cold day in this part of the country back then. And it's interesting, those of you who've spent time in England, it's coldest when the wind comes from the east. Yes? Excellent. In a workhouse, Christmas Day. It is Christmas Day in the workhouse, and the cold, bare walls are bright with garlands of green and holly, and the place is a pleasant sight. For with clean washed hands and faces, in a long and hungry line, the paupers sit at the table, for this is the hour they dine. And the guardians and their ladies, although the wind is east, have come in their furs and wrappers to watch their charges feast, to smile and be condescending, put pudding on pauper plates, to be hosts at the workhouse blank banquet they've paid for with the rates. Oh, the paupers are meek and lonely with your thankly kindly mums. So long as they fill their stomach, what matters from whence it comes? But one of the old men mutters and pushes his plate aside. Great God, he cries, but it chokes me, for this is the day she died. The guardians gazed in horror. The master's face went white. Did a pauper refuse the pudding? Could their ears believe aright? Then the ladies clutched their husbands, thinking the man would die, struck by a bolt or something by the outraged one on high. But the pauper sat for a moment that rose mid the silence grim, for the others had ceased to chatter and trembled in every limb. He looked at the guardian's ladies. Denying their lords, he said, I eat not the food of villains whose hands are foul and red, whose victims cry for vengeance from some unhallowed grave. He's drunk, said the workhouse master, or else he's mad and raved. Not drunk, nor mad, cried the pauper, but only a haunted beast who, torn by the hounds and mangles, declines the vulture's feast. I care not a curse for the guardians, and I won't be dragged away. Just let me have the fit out. It's only on Christmas Day that the black past comes to goad me and prey on my burning brain. I'll tell you the rest in a whisper. I swear I won't shout again. Keep your hands off me, curse you. Hear me right out to the end. You come here to see how paupers the season of Christmas spend. You come here to watch us feeding as they watch the captured beast. Here's why a penniless pauper spits on your paltry feast. Do you think I will take your bounty and let you smile and think you're doing a noble action with the parish's meat and drink? Where is my wife, you traitors, the poor old wife you slew? Yes, by the God above me, my Nance was killed by you. Last winter my wife lay dying, starved in a filthy den. I had never been to the parish. I came to the parish then. 
I swallowed my pride in coming, for before the ruin came, I held my head up as a traitor, and I bore a spotless name. I came to the parish criving bread for a starving wife, bread for the woman who'd loved me through fifty years of life, and what do you think they told me, mocking my awful grief, that the house was open to us, but they wouldn't give out relief. I slunk to the filthy alley. Twas a cold, raw Christmas Eve, and the baker's shops were open, tempting a man to thieve. But I clenched my fists together, holding my head awry. So I came to her, empty-handed, and mournfully told her why. Then I told her the house was open. She had heard of the ways of that. For her bloodless cheeks went crimson, and up in her rags she sat, crying, Bide the Christmas here, John. We've never had one apart. I think I can bear the hunger. The other would break my heart. All through that eve I watched her, holding her hand in mine, praying the Lord and weeping till my lips were salt with brine. I asked her once if she hungered, and as she answered no, the moon showed in at the window, set in a wreath of snow. Then the roof with ba room was bathed in glory, and I saw my darling's eyes, the faraway look of wonder that comes when the spirit flies. And her lips were parched and parted, and her reason came and went, for she raved of our home in Devon, where our happiest years were spent. And the accents, long forgotten, came back to the tongue once more, for she talked like the country lassie I wooed by the Devon shore. Then she rose to her feet and trembled and fell on the rags and moaned and, Give me a crust, I'm famished for the love of God, she groaned. I rushed from the room like a madman, crying food for a dying woman, and the answer came too late. They drove me away with curses, then I fought with a dog in the street and tore from the mongrel's clutches a crust he was trying to eat. Back through the filthy byways, back through the trampled slush, up to the crazy garret, wrapped in an awful hush. My heart sank down at the threshold, and I paused with a sudden thrill, for there in the silvery moonlight, my Nance lay cold and still. Up to the blackened ceiling, the sunken eyes were cast. I knew on those lips, all bloodless, my name had been the last. She called for her absent husband. O oh God, had I but known, had called in vain and in anguished, had died in that den alone. Yes, there, in a land of plenty, Lay a loving woman dead, cruelly starred and plundered by her loaf of the parish bread at yonder gate last Christmas. I pled for a human life. You who would feed us paupers, what have you done to my wife? There, get ye gone to your dinners. Don't mind me in the least. Think of the happy paupers eating your Christmas feast. And when you recount their blessings in your smug parochial way, say what you did for me too, only last Christmas Day. Thank you.